So at the recent Republican National Convention, Donald Trump said that he is going to end EV tax credits immediately. I personally think this is a terrible idea, and I'll explain why. Plus, Clone Robotics has a new robotic hand and it looks amazing, and the Cybertruck was the top-selling electric pickup truck in May. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All coming to you from Manhattan Beach one or two more times. I'm going to X Takeover. We will be leaving in five whole days from now, so wow. <laughs> it's very, very soon. So we're going to be there Friday and Saturday and leaving on Sunday. But anyway, hopefully all of you will be there and I will get to say hi to you. That will be awesome. So definitely look me up if you're there on, on Saturday, I believe in the afternoon sometime. I know we have our panel at 3.50 to 4.20. <laughs> but also we have a meet and greet before that. So definitely look up the schedule so you can say hi to me in person. That would be awesome. Anyway, moving on right here, the first story I want to talk about is from Inside EVs. And of course, I will leave links to all this stuff in the description so you can check it out. But Tesla Cybertruck was among the top five most registered EVs in the US in May and also was the best selling pickup truck, EV pickup truck in May, which is great. So as you can see here, Cybertruck entered the US market back in November, but really, you know, in a significant way did not start ramping up production and sales until 2024. So we're looking at, you know, five months, May would have been five months from that point. And according to Global Mobility's data and automotive news, the Tesla Cybertruck was the fifth most registered EV in May with 3,907 units. This means that Tesla had three EV models in the top five, as the usual top two are Model Y and Model 3. So that is fantastic news. And of course, uh, the numbers are very, very skewed. The Model Y and Model 3, of course, produce many, many more vehicles than the Cybertruck. But again, the Cybertruck is just ramping at this point and they're only selling the Foundation Series at this point, which is a very expensive version of the vehicle. So we're looking at a, a compression of availability and a compression of the price of the Cybertruck. So it's really pretty amazing stuff that the Cybertruck that starts at a much higher price than the Chevy Silverado or the Ford F-150 Lightning is selling as well as it is. So as they say, the competition in the all-electric pickup segment will become fierce in 2024 with several models available on the market. Once Ram joins in with its all-electric and plug-in hybrid model, it will be even more interesting. Other manufacturers intend to join later this decade. The Tesla Cybertruck is already a huge player in the EV pickup segment, which again is remarkable considering this is only five months into 2024, noticeably outselling the next two contenders combined. According to the report in May, the Ford F-150 Lightning had 2,353 new registrations, while the Rivian R1T had 1,237. General Motors Chevy Silverado EV and GMC Hummer EV pickup, and I don't think the Hummer should even count, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Combined, they basically had a thousand registrations. So if we look at May of 2024, you can see the Tesla Cybertruck 3907, and then the Ford F-150 Lightning, the Rivian R1T, the Chevy Silverado, the GMC Hummer, and that makes a total of 8,524, and you can see that the Cybertruck was pretty close to half of that. So as Inside EVs notes, that's 45% of registrations of the top five all-electric pickups went to Cybertruck. That's pretty impressive statistically. If we look at all of 2024, you can see that the Ford F-150 Lightning still outdoes the Cybertruck truck with 13,443 registrations, while the Cybertruck only has 7,879, and the Rivian R1T has just shy of 4,000 registrations. But of course, in early 2024, the Cybertruck was very much still ramping, and there's been some delays with things like the accelerator pedal, the windshield wiper motor, all of that kind of stuff. So manufacturing has to ramp, and they have to deal with some quality issues and things like that. But as Inside EV says, we have already seen EV pickup estimates for the second quarter of 2024, which would be April, May, June which show that the Tesla Cybertruck is on top. However, registrations lag behind sales and deliveries by at least a few weeks, so it's a different metric. And of course, unfortunately, Tesla lumps the Cybertruck in with the models S and X, so we only get a generalized, you know, <laughs> answer to this question. Registrations, of course, is a good way of digging through this information to get specifics on the Cybertruck, but as they say, it's delayed by several weeks, so we're not going to get up-to-the-moment information. Anyway, because Tesla has a substantial backlog for Tesla Cybertruck, and the model is expected to get several new versions outside the initial top-of-the-line foundation series, which is very true, it should continue growing. We are talking about thousands per month. This means that Tesla's pickup will probably become the best-selling EV pickup in 2024, and one of the best-selling EVs overall. The other pickup trucks, which are not as polarizing, now have to compete for a more traditional customer base. So of course the Cybertruck is definitely not for everybody, it's a very polarizing appearance, but it 
Ride is far and away the best pickup truck that exists. It also costs like that, you know, at $100,000 to start for the Foundation Series. It's no joke, but once the Foundation Series run is over and they have the two motor version for $80,000 with the potential for a $7,500 tax credit, which we're going to get back to in just a second, the truck becomes much more affordable and will probably continue to sell very, very well throughout this year and next year, etc. Next up, I want to show you this video from Clone Robotics. This is a preview because Scott and I are going to do a breakdown of this hand, which is pretty darn remarkable. But even from this, you can see just how amazing this hand is and also how different looking it is. It's, it looks much more like a human hand than a robot hand. So I'm just giving you a little preview of that. Definitely subscribe and all of that kind of stuff so that you can see the next video because Scott and I, I'm sure, will get into it very, very deeply. Haven't recorded it yet, but we will see. Anyway, this hand looks really, really cool and I think could point the way towards the future of robotic hands. And finally, speaking of tax credits, you can see that during the Republican National Convention, as Dave Lee reposted, Trump said, I will end the electric vehicle mandate on day one, thereby saving the U.S. auto industry from complete obliteration. You can see that Elon Musk responded to that, obliteration is coming anyway. And I couldn't agree more with Elon. Now, a lot of people say that the U.S. EV tax credit is not worthwhile and that we should put money into other areas and things, but I personally think it's very important and not perhaps for the reasons you think. It really isn't all that important to Tesla, and Elon Musk said that. He's like, we'll survive without the subsidies. But the rest of the U.S. auto industry, including foreign players like Hyundai and Kia and everyone who's making vehicles in the United States, are going to have a very, very hard time competing with the Chinese EVs that are going to flood the U.S. market if the U.S. doesn't move aggressively towards having electric vehicles not manufactured in China in the United States. So of course I want to be very clear, I am not a public policy expert by any means, and I could be very, very wrong about this. But my personal opinion is that if Trump wins, and I do not think that that is the best for America, you know, you can disagree with me on that, you can unsubscribe, whatever you want. But my feeling is if he wins and he tries to implement this, number one, it will probably take a while for it to happen. It's not going to happen on day one because you can't undo a bunch of legislation that quickly. But of course, what it will do in the short term is cast mass confusion on the credits and on whether U.S. automakers should go in on EVs or go back to traditional gas cars or things like that. I think what will happen is that we'll see an even bigger pullback on the amount of electric vehicles being produced by these other manufacturers, specifically GM, Ford, Stellantis, and some of the you know Korean and Japanese manufacturers in the United States making the vehicles, getting the tax credits, although that's pretty difficult, and you know VW and stuff like that too. But I think that that confusion will slow everybody down, and they will pull back on their EV plans. And yet, in the next couple of years, you know maybe through 2026 or early 2027. This might look like a good thing and it might look like it's saving jobs for the US, but the problem is that electric vehicles are the future. There is no denying that. They are just the future. That is the way things are going to go. The cost curves, it's like physics. It's like Tony Siba says, it's like physics when you look at these cost curves. Electric vehicles are the future and that just is the way it's going to go. And I think that for all the faults of the Biden administration, of which there are many, many, many faults, including the fact that he won't drop out at this point, but amongst those faults, the best, the highlight in my mind is the aggressive legislation to recenter auto manufacturing and specifically electric vehicle auto manufacturing and batteries etc into the United States. I think that has been a really big win and undoing that would be a terrible idea for the long-term survival of you know unions and legacy auto manufacturers and all of those folks. Elon says obliteration is coming anyway. I fully believe that. I think that these other manufacturers are going to have a very hard time surviving. I think that it's going to be extremely difficult for them to get through this, but by allowing them to continue to make gas cars, which are basically like, you know, continuing to make horses at this point, when you can see that an automobile is the future. A hundred years ago, this is the same equivalent thing you're talking about here. We've got a situation where we've got a better solution. It's going to get cheaper. It's obviously the future. And if you don't aggressively move towards that future in your country, you will be replaced by somebody who does. And the somebody who does right now is China. And it doesn't matter what kind of taxes you put on them or anything like that. What will eventually happen, of course, is that BYD and other major players will just put up shop in the United States or Mexico. They'll build factories there and they will sell the cars without having to pay the tariffs. And then instead of GM or Ford that are, you know, owned in the United States and United States companies, we will have these Chinese companies that are in the U.S., 
sure, they're paying some workers to do the work and everything, and that's great. But the problem is that the companies themselves have moved over to China. The control over the future has moved to China at that point. I personally think this is an absolutely terrible idea. I think even more aggressiveness moving towards electric vehicles and subsidizing legacy auto manufacturers to try to do a better job and new startups as well. I mean, you know, Tesla is Tesla's at a point where they pretty much are going to be fine, right? They may have some problems because of interest rates and economic headwinds and everything, but they're going to be fine long-term they're going to make enough money and they're really an AI company anyway and an energy storage company so they're going to survive on all this but it's these other companies like legacy auto manufacturers and of course Rivian and some other startups those are the ones that really really need this in order to survive and to grow so I, I can't state strongly enough that my opinion is that this is a very very bad idea I agree with Elon that obliteration is coming no matter what but there are different ways for things to become obliterated and this would be the absolute worst way for obliteration to happen. So anyway, we can revisit all of this in 2030 and take a look back at what actually happened. But my prediction is by 2027, if we get rid of the aggressive electric vehicle tax credits and get rid of aggressive repatriation of that manufacturing into the United States, that the US will pay severely for that in that their auto manufacturing industry will basically cease to exist except for Tesla. All right, so that's what I've got. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments. I have a feeling I will get some nasty comments about the political situation right now. Such is life. That's the way it's going to be the next few months. Anyway, while you're down there, if you don't mind liking and subscribing, that would be amazing. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.